blessings, blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here, here below. Why don't you praise Him above? Heaven, heavenly host, praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. to worship with our call to worship. The Reverend Shedrick Flynn and Sister Letitia Cheatham will lead us in our call to worship this morning. We may be having some technical difficulties. Sometimes that does happen. I'm unmuted, Pastor. Okay, there you are. Is Reverend Flynn there? All right, I'll take the place of Reverend Flynn. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Those that be planted in the house of our Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house, Lord. I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. O sing, sing unto the, the Lord, Lord a new song, for he has, has done, done marvelous, marvelous things. things. Make, Make a joyful, joyful noise, noise unto, unto the, Lord, the Lord, for he is good, good and his mercy, mercy endures forever. forever. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. And we go into our moments of praise and worship this morning. Let's hear from our ministry of music.
Amen. We give you honor and glory. Nobody like you, God. Let's go to the throne of grace and prayer. Sister Faith Marshall is going to lead us in our invocation this morning. Father God, this morning, Lord, we give you glory, Lord. There is absolutely nothing like you, Lord. And we just want to give you all the glory this morning, Lord. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for bringing us, Lord, together one more time to join in one accord, Lord, to lift up your name, Lord, and to hear a word from you. Father, we thank you for everyone gathered today, Lord, and we thank you for the technology that has allowed us to gather, Lord God, and the different formats of the technology, Lord God. And so we pray for everyone who's participating in this service this morning, Lord, whether it be by Facebook or Zoom or telephone, Lord, or live streaming or after the fact, Lord God, we just want to thank you, and we pray your covering over everyone who is present in this service, Lord. And Father, we pray for a fresh anointing on our preacher this morning, Lord God. Father, we pray that you would pour forth your word through him with power, Lord God, and with conviction, Lord God. And we pray that you will prepare the hearts of everyone who will hear your word, Lord God. We pray for transformation in us, Lord God, to just make us more into your image lord father we pray for salvation lord for those who might be not have a relationship with you lord Bye. god and need to love you back and need to to hear a word and to to um, have another opportunity to accept you and for you to transform their lives lord god father we continue to pray for one billion souls to be saved during this time of pandemic lord god Father, we lift up all those who are suffering, Lord, those who have been displaced from their homes through fire, through flood, Lord God, through tornado, Lord, and just through difficult financial situations, Lord God. We pray that you would prepare a place for them, Lord God, and we pray that you would help your people, Lord God, throughout this land as well as throughout the world, Lord God, to find ways to reach out to those who are in need. Father, I sit in your presence this morning, Father God, we just we just ask you to allow your Holy Spirit to minister to our spirit, Lord God. Transform us, Lord God, and make us effective witnesses for you. In all these things we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, St. Paul. The scripture says God is a soul. They that worship him must worship him. Sweetest of loves, who am I? 
my heart becomes free and my shame is undone here in your Congregation, right where you are, you ought to just give God a little bit of praise. You ought to just tell the Lord, thank you. Amen. And just, just put these words in your mouth. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Glory to God. Invite the Lord to fill your space wherever you are, in your home, in your office, wherever you are, your car. Fill this place with your presence, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, God. Amen. It's always good. It's always appropriate to worship and praise our God and to let God know 
Uh, that it doesn't matter where you are. You're just going to give God some glory. Amen. All right. Let's go to our scripture. Our words of scripture are being uh, lifted by the Reverend Wayne Rymers. Uh, Reverend Wayne, uh, we'll try to put the scripture up on the screen here for you. And uh, if you're on and able to unmute, we'll be reading the scripture next. All right, our scripture lesson this morning is coming to us from Exodus chapter 17, verses 1 through 7. Exodus chapter 17, verses 1 through 7. The whole Israelite community set out from the desert of sin, traveling from place to place as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. So they quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses replied, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you put the Lord to the test? But the people were thirsty for water there. And they grumbled against Moses. They said, why did you bring us up out of Egypt to make us and our children and lifestyle stock die of thirst? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, what am I to do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord answered Moses, go out in front of the people, take with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go, and I will stand there before you by the rock at Horbred. Strike the rock and the water will come out of it for the people to drink. So Moses did this in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the place Massah Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and because they tested the Lord saying, is the Lord amongst us or not? This is the word of the Lord, already blessed. Amen. As we get ready to go um, into the word, let's hear again our music ministry lift us up. Yeah. 
Amen. Let's pray. Yes, indeed, God, you are more, more than enough for me, for all of us, God. You are the source of our supply. You have what we need and know what we need before we need it, and it's already prepared. God, help us to come to the mindset of knowing how to rely and trust and wait on you. Give us a word, we pray, today as we look to the scripture to give us guidance for the days ahead. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. As we continue through the uh, selections of scriptures in the Old Testament um, found in the lectionary, we continue in this saga following along the Exodus uh, narrative. We, follow, we continue this saga of the children of Israel as they are in between their freedom and deliverance from slavery in Egypt and on the way to the promise that God has uh, shared with them. And so they're caught in betwixt and between. And in the midst of that, we see a pattern. We see a pattern of uh, grumbling and mumbling. And so this uh, message this morning is a really a continuation of last week's message, which was too many BMWs in the church, and we're not talking about cars. We were talking about uh, belly aching, moaning, and wailing. Amen. So this morning, as we look in this passage of scripture that has been read, thank you, Reverend Wayne, for lifting up for us um, Exodus chapter 17, verses 1 through 7. And this is an incident where the people are complaining because they're thirsty with water, and they're so angry, according to Moses' estimation, that they are about ready to stone him. And so let's, uh, let's change the lens, if you will. Let's look at this from another perspective and look at it from the perspective of Moses, who is on the hot seat. And we'll call this handling a hot spot. Handling a hot spot. And so when we get to this place of uh, desert, of, of wilderness, dryness, the people are thirsty. They have a legitimate need. They need water. But the text raises for us the question of how we think about God. And if we are like the children of Israel, that is, that when things are going well and all of our needs are met, do we uh, assume, yes, God is indeed with me. But as soon as we get to a point where there is a need, where there is something that's lacking and something we are looking for, do we automatically come to the point of thinking, that must mean God is not with me. And that's the question that the Israelites raise, is the Lord among us or not? And so if that's where our, our, our growth is and understanding, you could pretty much uh, say that that's a very, um, how should we be nice about it? That's a, that's a very beginning uh, stage of spiritual maturity. And that's where the children of Israel are as a people. They're in the beginning of spiritual maturity to understand that God is only with you when you have everything you need. And that just because you have something that there is a need for, a want, a desire, and you had, cannot fulfill it, that must mean God is not with you. Because as you mature in faith, you begin to understand that you can see God in the times of plenty as much as you can see God in the times of lack and want and need. In fact, um, throughout the Bible, the, 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 the picture of the wilderness is uh, a symbol um, of uh, cleansing and purifying. The wilderness is a symbol of what it takes to cleanse, to purge, if you will, that which needs to be set aside. Yeah, let me unpack it a little bit. You see, sometimes you and I don't really uh, get clarity on what's important 
and whom is most important in our lives until we go through this cleansing of the wilderness. It is that, that cleansing, the heat, the, the desperation, the dryness, the, the thirst, the stuff that, that causes this pain that, that really cleanses us because now you're able to sort of put aside those things that are non-essential so that you can focus on the essential. It is the wilderness that continues to test the children of Israel. And if they had not gone through the is the, the wilderness, uh, that they would not have a clarity of who God is and God's ability to provide. Yeah. I feel you, Brooke. I, I understand that. I, I, I don't like it either. I don't like the wilderness. I do not like the testing. I, I could do without the dry places. Lord, can you just fill up the truck, fill up the cupboard, fill up the, the, the vats, fill up the, the, whatever I need. Fill it up, God, and just, just let me be chilled and not have to worry about running out. But it's the running out that clarifies our relationship with God because it reminds us of who God is and it helps us to be clear about the power and the ability of God to provide. And it also helps us to be clear about our relationship with God so that we are not transactional people. And that is that we only think God is in the picture when God is giving. But when uh, there's something I need, all of a sudden we start asking, well, is God here? Is God with us or not? You see, God, I think, takes a very, uh, a very understanding approach with the children of Israel at this point. You will know that there is a similar story in Numbers, and, um, and the outcome is a bit different and uh, one scholar has actually suggested that perhaps with the difference between this story here and the one in Numbers is that in between there is God having given the children of Israel the covenant. And so God is a little more lenient pre-covenant than, than God is after the covenant. In other words, after God has given the contract, well, contract is not even a good word, the covenant to say, this is who I am, this is what I will do, this is what I expect of you, that God is, is not as lenient as God is in these early parts of the Exodus story. And so God, you know, basically just deals with their need in this particular text. I just want to lift that up because, you know, we who have the covenant and then the covenant is, is ratified and clarified and sealed with Jesus' own blood, you know, I think God has a different expectation of us than, than God does with these children of Israel as they're walking through. But nevertheless, we got to go through stages to get where we're going. And so the children of Israel are so angry and upset that they look at Moses and uh, they're like, you know, bro, why'd you bring us out here? We, we could have died. We could have stayed where we were. I think Dion put in the chat, yeah, those Israelites were something else. I, yeah, they were. But every now and then, we have to change the lens. We have to switch the view and begin to, uh, before we just get too hard on them, we got to ask ourselves, where are the places in my own life that I have been complaining and I have been murmuring and I have been like the children of Israel? In fact, in fact, um, it might be helpful just that, you know, think back in the times and, and, and let's just, I'll be honest. I mean, there have been times I've caught myself complaining where there was to a bunch of people. And usually that's not the case. Usually it's just to myself. I just, yep, yep, yep. Just complaining and complaining and complaining. And then you have to step back and just realize what I'm complaining about ain't that deep. What I'm, what I'm just running on and on and about and fussing about and angry about and twisted about ain't that deep. And yes, I don't want to discount what the children of Israel were going through. They had a legitimate need. They needed water. They needed water. We, we, we understand you may go for weeks, a month or more without food, but you really can't go far without water. You, 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 you better get some water within a couple of days or else you're done for. So we know they needed water. The challenge is that their need pushes them to the question of whether or not God is even there with them. 
And now it doesn't make sense logically or theologically, right? If God delivered them, right? If God set them free and all that God did to get them out of Egypt, all of the plagues, bringing them through the Red Sea, closing up the sea upon uh, Pharaoh and his army, and all of that, if God did all of that, really? God brought you here and just like, okay, I'm good. I'm just going to leave you. God is not doing that. And you and I have, been, have got to get that in our thought process and our spirit, whatever age we are, we got to be able to look back and say, wait a minute, do I think that God brought me here to leave me now? I don't, you know, uh, you, you've been through challenges, you've been through trials, you've been, you've been through, through extreme circumstances, and now we're in COVID, and now we're in the midst of, uh, you know, this, this pandemic and triple pandemic, as some people say. And some of us are getting frustrated, and some of us are getting anxious, and some of us are saying, I don't know. Do you think God brought you through all of that? To just get you to a, a pandemic and, and the administration of 45 and say, yeah, I'm, I'm going to leave you. No, that's not our God. It's not the God we serve. And so here Moses is now. He's the, the leader and uh, the people are angry. And just, just, just a bit of clarity, I'm, I'm sure there's not a preacher in America or in the world probably at some point has not felt like Moses, like, Lord, what do you want me? Just these people, like they, they, they get ready to stone me. Like, I don't, I don't even know what to do. Like, you know, I mean, I, and, and, and I'm sure at, at some point, all of us kind of fancy ourselves as a Moses, right. You know, but, but the truth of the matter is he is in a hot spot. He, he, and he, he's gotten to the point where the, he recognized the people are so upset and so angry. You know, he's just, uh, they, they, Lord, I'm, I'm almost done. I don't know what to do. They, they're, they're ready to kill me. Um, and so I thought we'd look at it from the perspective of how Moses handles the hot spot. And the people have gotten to the point where they're so upset and so angry that they are they're ready to take his life. And there's three things that pop up out of the text for me. And, and, and the first one is in verse number four, which is very simple and very clear. It's, it's not real deep. You see what Moses did. He prayed. He went to God. And he took the issue to God. I think it's very important. It's, 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 uh, it's very simple. But you can take some lessons from what he did not do, at least according to the, 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 the text and the narrative. He didn't go off on the people. He didn't go off and say, well, you ungrateful, you know, I didn't did all of this. No, he just went to the Lord. It's like, Lord, I, you see these people? I, they're, they're ready to kill me. I, I need to... In other words, whenever you're in the hot spot, no, no matter where you are, in front or, or second or third, maybe you're at the back of the line, it doesn't matter where you are, when you get to the hot spot, you better be able to have a prayer life. You, you, you better have a priority in your prayer life where you can take it to the Lord. Moses' prayer was very plain and very simple. It wasn't flowery language. For those of us who've been in church for a while, we know how we can get eloquent in our prayers, right? There's nothing wrong with eloquent prayers, but sometimes eloquence is, is in the way. You just need to be able to talk to God. You just need to be able to put it out there. God, I, you see what I'm, the trouble I'm in. I need your help. He goes to God in prayer. And I just want to suggest in the midst of COVID, I know I'm talking to spiritual people, but I just want to remind us uh, when, when the complaining starts, whether it's coming from us or from outside of us, let's take it to God. When we feel ourselves com composed to complain, when we feel ourselves in the mode where nothing is satisfying us and even good stuff that happens, it just seems like it just fades just like that. Next thing you know, you're back to the mumbling and the grumbling. Let's get on our knees and go to God in prayer.
In fact, let's have that communication often. You know, we used to sing as the little children, just a little prayer in the evening, just a little prayer in the morning, a little prayer at noon to keep our heart in tune. You know how it goes. That, that, that ha have a little talk with Jesus. Moses goes to the word, to the Lord in prayer. The second thing that I notice is found in verse number five. God reminds Moses of what he already has and instructs him to use it to deal with the situation. And so what God says to Moses is you remember that staff that you used and he struck the water and it, take that and go and strike the rock. In other words, what I want you to do right now is use what you've got. You know, this is, this is, this is another case where God looks at Moses and as he did early on when God was telling Moses to go to tell Pharaoh in the first place to let God's people go, he asked Moses, what is, what is that you have in your hand? And here it is. Again, he looks at Moses while Moses is complaining and says, really, you've got what you need. Just go use it. And it's amazing sometimes how, how it just takes God's voice, God's guidance. It just takes that communication with God for God to reveal to pull back the covers, to open up our eyes so we can see what we already have in a new light. <laughs> Amen. You know, I, I, I'm going to say sometimes, you know, I know I'm guilty just looking, I, I want that, I need this. If I had that, I could do this. And, I, and then, you know, it's that, and this is not in my grasp right now. And I'm just, Ugh. but God says, hold up, look what you got. Look what you have. Use that. And I'm praying for clarity, for God to open up the resources all around us. They may be within our home and our family. They may be within our network or our circle. They may be within, within our reach, our grasp. There may be other people that are disposed and, 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 and has, have a disposition to assist us. They may be with gifts that God has already planted within us. They, they may be other types of resources that are within our grasp to get through what we're going through. But the point is, God is able to say, what is it that you have? Use that. In fact, to, for Moses, he says, look, you used this before. You see that staff? Use it again. It's going to work. Hallelujah. Somebody will get a shout. It's going to work. <laughs> Amen. It's going to, you've used it before. Use it again. And it's going to work. And, and the final thing is, in verse number seven, what Moses does is take the elders and because of God already providing the way for him, performs the miracle in the presence of the elders and the water comes out of the rock. It's not in front of everybody. It's in front of the, the leadership, the elders, but everybody benefits from it. And that, you know, there, there, is, there is a time, there is a time when uh, there are some things that have to be just brought together so that it can benefit the whole. And I know different, even in this pandemic, different people have asked me and shared and, and just said, you know, do you know, when, when that time is, when the date is, and we're going to open doors up again, and we're going to come together and be in the sanctuary one more time and see each other's face. And then the answer is, frankly, no, I don't know, really don't. Uh, well, one of the things I began to share with our leadership, and particularly our stewards, is that this is an opportunity for us to strengthen that which remains. And so while we are focused on, you know, Moving forward, of course, it gives us an opportunity to focus on strengthening ourselves as a congregation, strengthening the bonds. And we talked a little bit about this on Thursday night with the partners call, and that is to strengthen the connections and to close up the net so that we are not finding people slipping through the cracks simply because they're just not connected. They're not getting on. They don't know how to get on. They don't have the abilities to get on. Nobody's checking on them. And so that's one of the things that we're, we're working on within the leadership, closing the net, tightening up the gap. Amen. And then, and, and then as, as we are 
also doing that one of the other things that we're preparing for is that we're just forming special blue ribbon commission, if you will, a committee um, between our stewards and trustees and others who will help us to prepare for that time. Whenever it is, we will come back into the sanctuary to prepare the protocols and the, all of the things that will take place, all that's included. And so kind of like what Moses was dealing with, he dealt with that in front of the elders, but when the results came, the water was out for everybody and everybody was blessed. And yes, God is indeed more, well, more than enough. So if you're in the hot spot, if you're, if you're the leader in the hot spot, if you are a follower in the hot spot, it doesn't matter. Pray, talk to the Lord and let the Lord give you some guidance as to how to use what you already have to get what you need. And when you do that, follow through and, and deal with what God does. And some, for some of us, that, that last point simply means that everybody can't be there when God is doing what God is going to do. For some of us, that means that's just a, maybe it's a small group. It's a, it's a prayer group. It's a prayer partner. Because when God is getting ready to do the miracle in our life, everybody's not going to be ready for it. And everybody's not going to be lifting up the point of, of uh, encouraging your faith. There are some people that just can't be around us when we're waiting on God's miracle <laughs> because they're not helping. They're just running their mouth. Damn, I ain't never seen that happen before, child. I, you know what I mean? Everybody can't be there. Sometimes we got to narrow down that circle. So we let God do what God's going to do, and the blessings overflow. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, for your goodness and mercy. And thank you for providing for us in our time of need. And we just say, God, again, please forgive us for the moaning and the whining and complaining. Forgive us for misunderstanding the testing and not understanding your provision. Forgive us for even suggesting that you somehow left us just because the going got tough. In Jesus' name. Listen, we want to just encourage you and just in, invite you to be a part of, one, the body of Christ, because love- Jesus Christ is the son of the living God who gave his life that we might have everlasting life. And very simply is um, uh, an, an invitation right now for you, if you're here, and have never acknowledged or confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, to do so. And we'd love to have you and join us um, as a member of the body of Christ, someone would be happy to reach out to you and pray with you. In fact, if you like to join St. Paul, we'd also want to put that in the chat. If you'd like to give your life to Christ, we'll put that in the chat. There's a number for you. You can text chat that number if you want to uh, do that. Text uh, the word join to the number that's in the text, 617-860-3777. You can do it that way, or you can put your name in the chat, and someone will do it with you in the chat online, whether you're on Zoom or you're seeing it on Facebook Live, or perhaps you will see it after it's recorded on uh, YouTube, we'd, we'd love to have you connected. And we, we, we'd we love to have you be a part of the body of Christ. We'd love to have you to be a part of the St. Paul Amy Church. And although it's located in Cambridge, Massachusetts, one blessing about the pandemic is we're not limited by boundary because this technology will allow us to reach uh, across all types of barriers. And there have been people who've seen us from around the globe. So thanks be to God for that. Amen. And as we, um, before we move forward just a little bit, we, we'd like to pause and just uh, begin thinking in terms of some of our prayer needs and prayer requests. I'd like to ask you to, if you don't mind, put put some of those prayer requests in the chat and we would like to uh, not only pray for those in this moment, but we'll also be praying for those in the future and you know, inviting other prayer warriors and prayer leaders to, to join us in prayer. I know some of us are still praying, of course, for our children and our teachers and our school uh, system um, uh, officials and staff and servant. We, we're praying for them. Some of us are praying for those uh, 
calamities and tragedies around the world and fires and so forth. Indeed, praying for furloughed and laid off employees, yes. Thank you, praying for one billion souls to be saved in 2020. All right, praying for the health of Sharon Fluellen. Thank you. And others, as you continue to put those messages in the chat, those prayer requests, we want to take them through the, to the throne of grace. This is a virtual altar call, if you will. But wherever you are, we invite you to pray. Gracious God, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who is our Christ, he is the anointed one who comes, who has mediated, Lord, hallelujah, salvation to us. God, we thank you for Jesus, who yet intercedes on our behalf, who sits at the right hand, God, and we thank you at your right hand. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the opportunity to come boldly before your throne. We can come boldly, God, not because of what we've done, but because of the righteousness that is counted and credited to us by the blood of Jesus. Thank you, God. So many cases, so many times we look back and see your provision. And yet, God, some of us, sometimes we just, our flesh takes, it, takes over. We stop thinking about how good you've been and what you've done. And sometimes we just start doubting and wondering in the midst of the challenges. Are you still there? Do you still care? Do you still love us? And it's foolish thought, God. We know you love us. We know you've taken care of us and brought us this far. And God, just because you've gotten us to this point, we know you're not going to leave us. But God, forgive us. Forgive us for the murmuring and the, the whining. And forgive us, God, for just not knowing how to handle the tough places, the hot places. Forgive us for going off and losing our temper and taking it out on somebody else. Forgive us, God, for being mad at you, but, 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 but acting out on people. Mm, God, thank you. Help, help us, Lord, just to, just to get focused in our prayer and to, and to hear your voice guide us into how we can use what's perhaps already available to us, God. Help us to understand the circle that needs to be around us to support us, God, and, and, and to be discerning about who needs to be in that circle, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we continue to pray for these requests, the request for healing for those who are sick. We're praying for the, for the abundant supply, God, to somehow reach those who are laid off, who are furloughed, God, that, that you would supply their needs, that you would meet needs, God, in the name of Jesus that you would touch now and, and be a blessing, God, and that you would, God, just like you did with the widow and the oil and the flower, God, somehow you made it so it just did not run out, God. You, you, you supplied. You are more than enough. God, we just keep, keep reminding ourselves, God, you are more than enough. You are more than enough. So God, if we need patience, give us patience so that we can wait until our change comes. If, if we need to grow, God, help us to grow so that we understand, Lord, better how to just hold on to your unchanging hand, even in the midst of changing circumstances. God, help us now. In the blessed name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. God, we continue to pray for the Miller, Carol Miller and her family, and the loss of her husband. Carol and her daughter, Megan, we certainly are praying for praying for Roger Houston. Good God will heal him. Amen. We'll do that. Praying for strength for this continued journey. Well, we'll do that. Amen. Praying for Brother Reverend Mark Green. Amen. Who's in the hospital. Reverend Danny May, thank you for sending that. Praying that the Holy Spirit will grant him the right decision on this um, replacement. Hallelujah. Amen. Pray for the spiritual warfare minister of the evangelism prayer vigil. Amen. Still need prayer warriors to join us in that. Thank you. Amen. Alabama's family. Uh, oh, Sister Cynthia Grant Carter, family and members in Alabama have electricity. Thank God for that. We give them God the glory. Student teachers and administrators and parents, we give God the glory. The Beeman family. Amen. Sister Renee's father's in transition. We'll definitely do that. Amen. 
Nisi says, thank everyone for their prayers for my brother. Amen. I'm glad to hear he's doing better. Amen. For wife Nadine, Reverend, um, Reverend Thompson, we'll definitely do that. Thank you for these prayer requests and others that are coming in. Praying for Reverend Makita Brooks, of course, formerly of Charles Street, and uh, she's now pastoring up in um, Niagara Falls, and her brother passed. We're praying for her and her heart and her family being inspired and encouraged. Victims of COVID-19, fires, floods, and hurricanes. These are another prayer requests. We continue to lift before God, and we'll do so as we go into this coming week. Let the church say amen. Also, the mental health of our youth. Thanks be unto God. Hallelujah. All right. Let's respond to the word, and we're going to go to this moment of uh, being able to um, share in our tithes and offerings. Uh, Sister Yemisi Oluwole is going to lead us. Sister Yemisi. Thank you, Pastor. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, family. I love you. Uh, we're at that time, and I am reminded of a song. Um, the words are very important because it reminds us to keep going back to our God as our provider. Um, great is your mercy towards me, your loving kindness, your tender mercies. Forever faithful you are towards me, always providing. Great is your mercy towards me. Great is your grace. So we thank God for who he is and the fact that no matter what we do and where we are, he's always there for us as our provider. Now, if you would with me, let us together say the offering prayer. I give today as a part of my worship. My giving is an act of faith. I trust you, Lord, and I believe your word. My giving reflects my gratitude for all you have blessed me with. And in my giving, I plant a seed in the rich soil of the kingdom. Help me, Lord, as sometimes. I learn to walk by faith sounds like this. and not by sight. Could in be like Jesus an asthma attack. Amen. There are many ways that we can give back, as you all know. One of those ways is to give by um, text. And so if you're so inclined, you can do that with Cash App by texting um, to dollar sign SB Cambridge. Um, or um, you can mail to St. Paul AME, 85 Bishop Allen Drive, Cambridge, Massachusetts, 02139. Um, you can also, actually, let me correct that. You can also text to SB Cambridge um, on your, on your uh, phones, if you're so inclined, to 73256. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much. And to God be the glory. We hope that um, congregation is taking an opportunity to participate in giving, whether you're doing so right now online, we encourage you to go ahead and do that. Uh, if you're preparing or have already prepared and we'll send it in, that is also good as well. And uh, we're also going to just um, consider some of the announcements. We'll hear from uh, uh, Brother Bobby Tynes in just a moment, but also uh, just to remind you of um, a few upcoming things. We know that quarterly conference is coming up as well, and we want to make sure that everyone has all of the information in for the virtual quarterly conference Tuesday. September 29th at 7 p.m. Also, just remind you that Tuesday from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. is the New England Conference Prayer Vigil Time. That is, we are inviting persons who will not only be engaged in prayer, but will take a slot, uh, whether it's a 15-minute slot or if you would take more, at least 15 minutes, somewhere between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m., and also, we're asking those persons who would be praying to be involved in fasting, and that is a water fast or a Daniel fast. Uh, but we would certainly appreciate that. Again, this the idea is doing spiritual warfare, and this is specifically focused on the upcoming election and reminding you we're not praying for or against anyone personally, but we are praying against the the spiritual strongholds that we see in operation, and particularly what's going on in these United States of America, whether the spirit of fear, the spirit of intimidation, the spirit of lies, all of those things. We do have slots open. We need your prayers. Uh, Bible study will uh, resume on Wednesday, September 30th at 7 p.m. 
Well, we join our partners call again on uh, Thursday, October 1st at 6.30 p.m. The Virtual Girls Brigade. Praise God, the Girls Brigade is coming back. And uh, let your young ladies know that uh, that it's going to be going on. And you might invite uh, some uh, young uh, ladies who would benefit from the Girls Brigade. It's a wonderful quality program that has so much to offer. And there's the information on the... Um, screen and you can email sister carlene there and she can get you the zoom link and all of that so yay girls brigade go for that the adult church school is uh, up and running and we thank god it starts at 9 a.m so you can join it before you join us at the 10 o'clock worship and of course we have our zoom service i do that because i realize there are people on the phone and they might not be able to see this information and so we want to make sure that they're able to hear yeah. all right Hallelujah. Okay, brother, brother Bobby Tynes, what you got for us today? Oh, I got uh, what a friend we have in Jesus. Amen. Take it away, sir. Mm -hmm.
Yes, sir. That is so awesome. Thank you so much. Amen. What a blessing. Beautiful melodious sounds, beautiful background there. It's, <laughs> it's great. Okay. Amen. Just before we go, just uh, for those on, on Zoom, check in the chat. There's good information for you. There's a document, Souls to the Polls, and it's in the chat room, which means you can just click on the document and it'll download to your computer or phone or tablet, whatever you're using. And then there's some wonderful information there that will help in terms of various deadlines and information that you need to know as voters. And also from Sandra Butler Tubbs, thank you so much. Um, the 2020 census has been extended to October 31st. So if you have not gotten that information in, please use the time uh, that uh, we can get folks who are uncounted to be counted. You can do it through the internet or you can call the number that is in the chat as well. And thank you to all of the uh, wonderful messages and and uh, and uh, birthday shout outs and amen. Oh, uh, thank. Let's do that. Let's let's not leave without uh, celebrating the birthdays that we have. We're almost out of uh, September, so those folks who are having a birthday in September, can we just get your name in the chat real quick? All of folks who are having a September birthday, we want to celebrate your birthday. Celebrate your birthday. Amen. It's your birthday. So it's Dion 92. All right. Terrence's birthday is tomorrow. All right. Beverly Williams. Amen. Yana Jenkins is 92. Trinette is 913. Joyce 917. Jerome Seely Ashford today. All righty. All right. Thank you. Uh, Sister Nanette 908. All right. So Lisa 914, whoops, they're going by so fast. Sherrod, Ariana, happy birthday. Uh, uh, brother Brother Donnell, are you standing by? Can you give us a little bit of the birthday song? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday. Amen. <laughs> I think that did it. Amen. Happy birthday to everyone having a September birthday. <laughs> All right. We're giving our benediction and then our closing. As you go forth from this place, may you be an ambassador of peace and grace. Whether you are in a parking lot or on a playground, May Jesus lead you through the gateway of another week with the good news that life is worth living. Regardless of what you do or where you are, grace abounds. May you go forth with eyes open to see the miracles of God's word. And may the love and peace of God sustain you and all those you love, wherever they may be. Leave this place renewed and refreshed. Amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Our God has spoken. Let the church sing me. Let the church sing me. Let the church sing me. God has spoken. Let the church.